Today we are seeing a lot of volatility in the stock market after coming off of Friday's intense sell-off. This is no surprise. The markets are back and forth a lot today. But really, when you pull this out in the grand scope of things, we are still very far off of where we were from the start of Friday, being around 421 on the S&P. Now, sitting at 404.83, you're down substantially. Now, we do still have a Fed speaker today, and she will be coming on Fed Brainerd about here in the next 30 minutes or so, but all of this information will be relevant to what we are seeing on the S&P and just the broad markets today, as well as AMC stocks. So let's get straight into it. First things first, is this VWAP line that I have been pointing out. We are above VWAP currently, and it looks like a majority of the day we have been above VWAP. So that is a very good sign, but I don't think this story is quite over. And what I mean by that is I don't think what the Fed said on Friday has really registered with investors, and I don't think investors really know how to... I uh, discount that in the stock market, right? By discounting that, I mean how much so stock do you want to sell? Because ultimately, the Fed said they are not going to be cutting rates in 2023. That is something the bond market has been looking forward to for the past couple of months, and that is why the stock market has really been rallying. You guys got to keep in mind, the bond market is much larger than the total value of the stock market. So when bond investors are wrong, well, that means stock investors are way wrong, and that's partly why you've seen that big reaction on Friday. So if earnings come in bad next earnings season, or if you get more bad economic data, well, that could feed into this narrative of the Fed is not going to U-turn still. And that's potentially where you could see more downside. And like I said, I still don't think everything is priced into the markets and appropriately discounted for what we heard on Friday. S&P 500 currently down about 0.10%. Well, look at AMC stock, currently up 3.05%, but unfortunately, APE is down 5.77%. So, technically, you're negative on your AMC position today when you factor in APE as long as you actually held on to your APE shares, which I did. I personally, I think you just want to own both if you're going to own AMC because there's going to be days where APE is up a lot. And AMC is down, or there's going to be days where AMC is up a lot and Ape is down. One of those days being today. But nonetheless, not a very bad day relative to what we have seen over the past couple of days. This is really the first day for AMC stock that we have been green in quite a bit of, of time. Ever since the stock split, really, it's been straight just red almost every single day. Besides this one day, we actually closed positive by 0.20 one percent now we'll come back to the technicals in just one second but let's talk about the data behind amc that we are currently seeing so the cost of borrow average is sitting at 20 percent the cost of borrow max is at 26 percent and the cost of borrow minimum is at 14.39 percent i think this is personally very very bullish that these numbers are remaining this high even though some of the volatility has certainly went away amc it's not moving 10 percent today right but the cost of borrow rates are still staying jacked up and i think that is a, a very good sign of big moves to come over the next couple of days and next couple of weeks as far as the dollar amount that is currently sold short in amc that is sitting at 1.02 billion dollars so we just crossed above that billion dollar threshold yet again the estimated short interest of free float continuing to climb now at 21.52 percent and the free flow out on loan sitting at about 38 percent shares out on loan 195 million and days to cover is sitting at 3.98 cost to borrow says right here at 13.37 all of these numbers up in between 10 and 53% over the last seven days. So you're definitely seeing more shorting. You're seeing more of a, a probability of shorts getting squeezed out of their positions when that time ultimately does come and when people just decide to be bullish on AMC stock. And by people, I mean the trading algorithms because let's be honest, the trading algorithms control the stock market. Individual traders, investors, hedge funds, they don't control the markets as much 
not even close compared to what the market makers do now as far as today and the option activity you are seeing seven orders totaling 457.52 thousand dollars positive order value of 57 percent so again that being above 50 percent i will take that as definitely a good thing now if we look at ape go ahead and take a look at ape you do have a short interest value amount or dollar amount at 862.87 million. So you are, uh, you know, combining APE and AMC. The short interest is very, very high on essentially this one company, but two separate securities. The estimated short interest of free flow is 25.76%. The free flow out on loan, 25.76%. Shares out on loan, 132.75 million. That's a lot of shares out on loan, guys. Days to cover, 2.18 and cost of borrow sitting at 10.83% and 100% share utilization. Now, if you look at the cost of borrow numbers, on Friday, cost of borrow max was 79%. It's currently sitting at 45, almost 46% still incredibly high for uh you know even w what most stocks are sitting at right now as far as the cost of borrow max even quote unquote retail or meme stocks are not even close to 45 percent cost to borrow max now cost to borrow average is 18.8 percent and cost to borrow minimum a little bit lower than amc's at 8.6 percent but all in all again very very bullish and unfortunately we don't have any option activity on uh ape i don't even think they have options i'm not 100 percent sure on that because I really haven't done anything with my eight position, uh, but nonetheless, there's a lot of short interest. There's a lot of room for shorts to get squeezed out of eight and AMC at this current moment, as well as that you are seeing a lot of dry powder still on the sidelines with about 51,000 calls that are currently out of the money expiring this Friday, about 1,200 calls that are currently in the money that expire by this Friday. About 25,000 call or puts that are out of the money and about 11,000 puts that are currently in the money. If you do get a big move up or if you just get a move up in general, well, you're probably gonna see a lot of people have to go out and hedge those options. A lot of that being the trading algorithms and the market makers. When that happens, that's when you could see uh, some more upside and that's possibly where you could get a breakout above that $10 level for AMC stock. And I think that is going to be a very, very important one. Now, before we dive back into the technicals, let's look at who is speaking here today. So you have Fed Brainerd that speaks at 215. And because of what Fed Jerome Powell said on Friday, any Fed speaker from here on out is going to be, I think, believed a lot more because the Fed speakers, let's be honest, they've been saying the same thing that Fed Jerome Powell said on Friday for the last weeks, if not the last couple of months, right? So it, it wasn't new information, but who it came from, Fed Jerome Powell himself, that was the new part. And depending on what these Fed speakers say, the markets might take them a little bit more seriously. So Fed Brainerd speaks at 2.15 p.m. And then tomorrow you have the Jolts job openings for July, the S&P case uh, Schiller Home Price Year Over Year Index. Uh, that comes out at 9 o'clock in the morning. J Jolt's job openings at 10 o'clock in the morning. But tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, you have Fed Barkin that speaks. And then at 11 a.m., you have Fed Williams that speaks. And these two could be very important. They are uh, voting members of the Fed. And then on Wednesday, you have Fed Mester that speaks at 8 o'clock in the morning. You do have some uh, data coming out of Canada, the GDP growth rate quarter over quarter. So uh, considering how close we are and how much trade we do with Canada, might be important, might not be. I wouldn't expect it to be a, a, a huge event or anything like that, but we'll see. 2022 has been a weird one. And then on Wednesday, you have Fed Bostic at 6 30 p.m as well again another voting member so that will also be important and then on thursday you have ism manufacturing pmi that obviously uh you know manufacturing pmi a reading of inflation will be very very important and then you have fed bostic again at 3 30 p.m on thursday then on Friday, you have non-farm payrolls for August, unemployment rate for August, average hourly earnings, participation rate, government payrolls, average uh, weekly hours, factory orders, so on and so forth on Friday. That data coming out at 8.30 in the morning. So it's looking to be a pretty eventful week as far as Fed speakers and potential economic data that could move 
the markets. Now, let's talk about all of that in context with AMC stock. If we get a bullish sentiment come over the markets again, well, that's going to be a very bullish thing for AMC. Now, if we get a negative sentiment that comes through the markets and we continue to see the stock market, you know, head to to lows, right? To potentially newer lows well amc could definitely retest that six dollar fifty cent level which was the low of 2022 adjusted for the stock split being on may 12 2022 so that's the possible bad case scenario here the good case scenario is the 50 and 100 day moving averages are very close right here sitting at $10.97 per share and $10.27 per share AMC at $9.50 per share is not too far off of those moving averages. So if we do get a bullish reaction and AMC can break out above those moving react uh, moving averages, which are going to act as resistance levels until we do well that's going to be a bullish thing and i think that could send us close to about 13 dollars per share here over the short term and that would kind of be my friday expectation if we do get that bullish sentiment in the marketplace the volume for the day sitting at 26 and a half million so the volume has definitely just dropped off continues to be very low the rsi is at 37.77 which as you guys do know closer to 30 is a little bit more on the oversold side 50 is neutral so you're at 37 you're definitely on uh the oversold side and just looking at the chart you can kind of tell that we're in the oversold uh, range on the rsi it's been pretty much straight down that is no surprise macd continues to get more bearish meaning it looks like we're we should get uh some degree of a bounce i don't know if it's going to be 10 percent, 100 percent, or five percent but you're going to get some degree of a bounce and uh, if you didn't want to hold ape or amc or one or the other that would be your opportunity to get out of it uh if, if that's something you wanted to do again i continue to hold ape and amc because I figure you probably should if if you own AMC and you got your ape for free. So that is pretty much going to be all for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Get your free stock with Weeble, Mumu, and Public down below in the description. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description as well. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.